everyone, I'm Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer. And today I'd like to take the opportunity to talk for ages about a G.I. Joe item that I don't collect, but feel it's important to mention. This vlog will be all about the collectible inserts in the carded G.I. Joe action figures over the years. You know, the bonuses, the freebies, premiums. Whatever you call them, they were free inside specially marked packages. Before I begin, on a related note, does anybody remember these mini frisbees? I can't find any information on them and I could swear the randomly colored 4 inch discs were included in boxes of post shreddy cereal around 1983 or 1984-ish. Maybe I'm remembering wrong so if anybody could please tell me where they actually came from, that would be awesome because it's been bothering me for literally decades now. And back to premiums that actually came inside the toys. In 1985, both the carded figures and box toys ran a contest called the Triple Win Game. The included game cards had random free stickers which could be collected. These are generally not considered true premiums by serious collectors since the focus was on the contest and not the stickers. Starting in 1986, the first true freebies inserted into card figures were the body transfers better known today as temporary tattoos. These were mostly distributed to the 1985 figures re-released in 1986, possibly as an incentive to buy the older figures. There were 12 different ones to find and collect, although I'm not sure how one collects tattoos exactly. These weren't very popular, with many collectors forgetting they exist and even more collectors mixing them up with stickers. That's only natural since they were the exact same design as the stickers that came in Milton Bradley action cards, G.I. Joe trading card packs, released the same year. The beautiful cards were more memorable and the stickers more useful, though it is odd that Serpentor is not referred to by his name here. In 1987, we were treated to a more memorable freebie, 10 Battle Ribbons. These were fabric military ribbons with a sticky backing so a child could mount them. They look a lot like real US service ribbons, although they were larger and not based on real life campaigns. Real US service ribbons are 1 and 1 quarter inch by 3 eighths of an inch, and the battle ribbons were 2 inches by a half an inch, representing events that happened in the comics and the G.I. Joe universe in general. This time, the freebies had an accompanying brochure detailing what was available and what each ribbon represented. Some interesting ribbons are the Battle of Fort Wadsworth. There were two battles here, one in issue number 19 and one in number 53, so I'm not sure which one this is referring to. The Sierra Gordo campaign ribbon refers to events in issue 54 through 56. The Cobra Island campaign ribbon doesn't refer to the comics, but to a Hasbro contest promotion called Live the Adventure. The Battle of Springfield refers to events in issues number 14, which is odd since the second battle in issue 50 seemed more significant. However, number 50 was an August 1986 comic, so a medal commission for it in January makes no sense, unless it was a typo and they meant January of 1987. This is definitely a freebie I wish Hasbro made available back in the day through other channels, like mail order, so collectors could get a complete set. The only freebie to do that was the next one. In late 1988 to 1989, we received the most popular freebie, the Micro Figure Collection. Well, popular by today's collector standards, not so popular when they were originally released. Kids at the time probably wondered what the point was of tiny versions of random older characters in old fashioned army men style poses. Hasbro clearly overproduced them since they quickly became available through mail order until 1990s and beyond. I already did a review of these so I won't go into further detail here, only to remark that Europe didn't get these. Instead they got the 8 mini vehicles. North America didn't get these as bonuses and were only available to us as full mail away sets in 1991. The bonus insert more commonly found in 1989 were the face camouflage paint tubes. Both the card back advert and the brochure used Hit and Run as the main example since that figure did have camo on his face and hands. There were four sets of two tubes, each representing camo for five different environments. The Snow Knight camo was combined here. 
I'm not sure how kids reacted to the roleplay aspect of these freebies, as I've heard more stories of trying to apply the paints to the toys rather than themselves, but that might have something to do with the application examples shown. They use Hit and Run, again, Spearhead, Tunnel Rat, twice, and Muskrat instead of a generic child's face. They're certainly difficult to collect today as you have to pair up the right colored tubes together for a full set. In 1990, the Command Rings debuted. There were eight different child-sized rings with the rear of the ring open to allow for some adjustment. The theme was Joe Divisions and Specialities. There was only one enemy represented here in the form of the Destro's Iron Grenadiers, and not Cobra oddly enough. Even stranger was the fact that the brochure refers to Cobra and not the Iron Grenadiers. Filling out the reverse of the brochure is an ad for mail order exclusive G.I. Joe sunglasses. That's kind of random. Anyway, Hasbro could have cheaped out on these and made a generic ring with different stickers on the face, but these have well sculpted faces and the details are painted. The Targat, Artillery, Infantry, Airborne, and Seal rings had metallic paint, which rubs off and fades faster than the others, making top condition examples of these kind of hard to find. These were actually quite popular during their time with kids, as well as now with collectors, despite not commanding very high aftermarket values. Again, Hasbro missed an opportunity to offer these to collectors later on, the way they did with the Microfigure collection. A presentation box set of all eight would have been cool. And now back into the world of forgotten freebies, card figures in 1991 randomly came with G.I. Joe magnets. There were only six to collect, and thank goodness for that. The magnets all had jokes. Really, really bad jokes. I'm saying jokes so bad that they were considered awful, not only back in 1991, but even to the very young age range they were marketed to. What has a metal head and sits in a rocker? Destro's mother. Seriously, who wrote that? The only bright side to collecting them sealed on card is that the figure mercifully covers the stupid magnets. Interestingly, there are variations of the card front advert. You can find them with a combined ad with the combat pay coupon insert or two separated ads. And no, despite the fact that the randomly inserted combat pay bills could be collected, they're not considered freebies but coupons. Kind of like the randomly generated values of flag points. They had different denominations with corresponding different character faces on the bills. It's 1992 and you can't swing a dead cat without hitting something that has a collectible card attached to it. And despite G.I. Joe figures already coming with file cards, this year's insert was one Special Edition Hall of Fame collector card. If these look familiar, that's because they recycled Impel's 1991 series of official trading cards. The 20 special edition versions of these cards are distinguished from the originals by having gold borders. The set consisted of 19 character only cards. While the original Impel set had many different subsets, like characters, vehicles, comic covers, etc. The characters were Duke, Grunt, Flint, Falcon, Hawk, Bazooka, Spirit, Gung Ho, Wetsuit, Stalker, Roadblock, Snake Eyes, Rock and Roll, Cobra Commander, Baroness, Major Blood, Firefly, Metalhead, and Cesspool. The 20th card was a checklist. The special edition cards are another forgotten freebie, but only because they're often mistaken for something else. The original Impel cards are so overproduced and easy to find on the aftermarket, collectors who come across the gold border versions assume they must be chase cards. And here's a curious fact. In 1993, Hasbro made available through mail order a collector's kit, which included a pack of regular Impel cards. You'd think that they would put in overstock special edition versions from the figures. 1993 continued placing bonus collector cards into carded figures, but with a twist. This time the freebies were only included with Mega Marines and Mega Monster sub-team figures. Available were one of 20 random G.I. Joe live action trading cards. These were photo cards showing stills from the 1993 series of live action toy commercials. Sadly, not much is known about these cards and I almost forgot to put them in this video. This was our first look at what a live action G.I. Joe would be like over a decade before the Rise of Cobra movie and nobody remembers them. The cards were also available randomly bagged in G.I. Joe comics being published at the time. Issues number 135 through 138, deep in the ninja story arc. Hmm, monsters, ninjas, I'm beginning to see why they were forgotten. 
And the final premium inserted into Carter figures has to be the most obscure and yet the most fascinating, mini comics. Randomly inserted with 1993 Balcor figures were one of four mini comics produced by Marvel and written by Larry Hama and Paul Kirshner. These comics had no cover and no numbering system. While the unique action-oriented stories weren't part of the monthly series continuity, there's nothing in them to suggest otherwise either. Being packins for a toy, they are simple, short, and a bit humorous, with each comic having nothing to do with one another. The most significant part, though, is that many new character versions and vehicles make their only comic appearances here. Balcor Muskrat, Super Sonic Fighters Major Blood, the Patriot Missile Tank, Fort America, and the Cobra Ice Snake vehicles, among others, are shown for the first time in comic form. Come on, IDW, I'm waiting for a reprint of these, preferably with a foreword by Larry Hama explaining how these curiosities came to be. While I'm not familiar with any bonus items placed in post-1994 card G.I. Joes, there was one that stuck out to me. In 2003, for the G.I. Joe vs. Cobra line, certain figures had an insert packet of chewing gum. Does any collector of 2000s era G.I. Joes remember this? What's the story behind that? Anyway, that's all the time I have for now. I'd like to hear any stories or comments by people who remember or collected any of these premiums. I'm also curious about what non-North American premiums were available. Thanks for watching this vlog and stay tuned. See you then!